Welcome to an introduction to the MIND Project Virtual Stroke Lab. When students first enter the lab, they are asked to type in their last name. Students play an endovascular neuroradiologist throughout this virtual lab and must make decisions based on what they learned about diagnosing and treating stroke victims. Before students begin their experience, they are asked to orient themselves to the navigation buttons located in the lower right-hand corner. The protocol button brings up a small window that students consult in order to learn a step-by-step -step instructions for each part of the lab. The EMR, shown here, stands for the Electronic Medical Record and provides background descriptions on strokes, possible treatments. This button will be used often throughout the lab. The doctor's notes button is where important decisions that the students made are recorded. The patient data button is where students access medical records and other information about the patients. The map button gives the students a bird's eye view of the hospital layout and a red triangle shows them their location to help make navigation easier. In this first scene, the student participant is paid to the emergency room to see Mr. Jones, a patient just admitted. Students will be asked to use the patient history and information they have read in the EMR to answer questions. Students will click on the continue button as they answer questions regarding the patient's stroke risk factors and determine the Hunt and Hess score before making their initial diagnosis of hemorrhagic stroke. The student finishes this section once the primary diagnostic test of CT head scan is made. In this scene, the patient has been prepped and taken to the CT room. Student participants must navigate from the ER to the CT room using the map if they need to. When they first enter the CT room, they start the CT machine and then using their arrow keys on the keyboard, align the patient's head within the machine. After completing this task, students navigate to the control room where they run a CT head scan without contrast and a 3D CT head angiogram. After each of these scans is complete, students must locate and highlight the suspected bleed. The EMR will help students learn how to interpret both of these CT scans. It describes what dark, light, and gray parts of the scan may indicate. When students highlight the correct area, they are told of the confirmed report that the bleed indicates a hemorrhagic stroke and that the blood's location, in Mr. Jones's case, classifies it as a subarachnoid hemorrhagic stroke, or SAH. After viewing the 3D reformation, students are informed that a digital subtraction and zerogram will be needed for more detail. In this scene, performing several diagnostic tests is crucial in order to determine whether or not the aneurysm is the cause of the SAH bleed. Students simulate a digital subtraction angiogram, or DSA, on Mr. Jones's head with specific prompting from the protocol. Students click and drag items from the tool tray in order to insert introducer needles, guide wires, sheaths, and catheters into the femoral artery, and then slowly move toward the brain, injecting dye at each stage while looking for an aneurysm. This part of the lab is interactive as students are asked to use the line control to advance the main catheter from the femoral artery to the area near the bleed. There are several screens students will be viewing while doing this part of the lab. The upper left screen shows a live view via the fluoroscopy machine. The right screen displays a reference map of the arteries relevant to this particular procedure and also indicates the position in the body. The lower left screen will show any 3D models or other images taken during the procedure. Once the main catheter is in place near the area of interest, students are prompted to begin the scanning process. They inject contrast dye into the blood vessels while taking in a series of scans with the fluoroscopy machine. Then the computer interprets the scans and removes everything except the areas where the dye has flowed through, leaving a pristine image of only the blood vessels and organs. Once that image is obtained, the student creates a 3D image of the hemorrhaging area to determine how to treat it.
students determine that an aneurysm is present mm -hmm. in Mr. Jones's mm -hmm. left internal carotid artery and was the cause of the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. The student is then given mm -hmm. options of how to treat the aneurysm, to clip it, coil it, mm -hmm. or to refuse to do the procedure. The next size of the aneurysm is crucial as students determine that the endovascular coiling would be the best treatment for Mr. Jones's condition. This ends section two of the virtual stroke lab. This is the last part of the lab where the life-saving procedure is completed. Students simulate a coiling treatment procedure on Mr. Jones's aneurysm. Students thread a microwire and a microcatheter through the main catheter and up to the neck of the aneurysm. Students block blood flow to the aneurysm by inserting varying size coils directly inside of it. The number of coils varies based on the size of the aneurysm. Usually, as in this case, the large coils are inserted first and the smaller coils used to fill in the gaps. The final DSA scan and 3D scan shows no aneurysm because the contrast dye only shows blood flow. Since the aneurysm is completely coiled, no blood can enter the aneurysm, which is why it no longer shows up on the scan. This should indicate to students that the procedure was effective. The final feedback explains that Mr. Jones awoke from the procedure without any neurologic change and that after 14 days in ICU, he went on to make a full recovery.